All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. That exciting story about a whaling cruise that resulted in an exciting hunt for buried treasure. After capturing the old man, Ezekiel Kipp, who tells them about the diamond mine on Galto Island, which has been covered by a landslide, the party returns to the Paul Parrot and sets sail for Ascension Island to purchase explosives in order to recover the treasure. Arriving at their port, they discover that wealthy friends of Captain Dalton's are being attacked by privateers. When last we left Johnny, Sue, Captain Dalton, and the rest, they had frustrated the attack of the privateers. But in so doing, little Sue Grange, attempting to save the life of Captain Dalton, had run between him and the chief of the privateers, Dirk Briscoe, who were having a fight on the beach. Briscoe draws a concealed pistol from his shirt and fires. Sue drops to the ground, and Briscoe's attention is distracted just long enough for Captain Dalton to put a finishing blow to the privateer's chin that lays him low. Amid much excitement, Captain Dalton shouts, Bless you, Dirk Briscoe. If little Sue is badly hurt, I... Sue! Uh... Sue, are you hurt bad? <laughs> Oh, my poor little Sue. Why did you run in the line of fire? Let me out of Mr. Grange. I'll see how badly injured she is. I'm not injured at all, Captain huh? Dalton. But, Sue, you fell. You must be hurt. Sue, are you sure? Ezra, I'm not hurt. I fell so that Privateer Briscoe would think he shot me, and it threw him off guard. Oh, blow me down. What a lass. Oh, Sue, that was quick thinking for sure. Lash me to a yard, I'm if it went. Sue, you've given me enough scares to take ten years off my life since we've been on this cruise. But I did it to save Captain Dalton. Aye, lass, and that you did. That thieving pirate would have finished me if you hadn't jumped between us. It looks like I'm beginning to owe my life to all of you. First, it's Dickon who knocked the pistol from the hand of that rat Altesti. Then the time you young'uns rolled the rocks down on Red Mulhooly and Ezekiel Kip. And then Joward and Buscara come into the cave in the nick of time when Kip was shooting at us from the rear of the cave. And now you, Sue, you've saved my life again. Blind me, Captain Dalton. You've a charmed life. Salt me for a herring if you haven't. Oh, salt him for a herring. Salt him for a herring. <laughs> I believe you're right there, Dickon. Thanks to the help of all my good friends here. Oh, Sue, I'm so glad you really weren't shot. If anything had happened to you then, I believe I would have shot that Dirk Briscoe myself. I was really frightened for the first time on this cruise when I saw you fall. How did you ever think of doing a thing like that? Well, when Captain Dalton and Dirk Briscoe were fighting, Briscoe was knocked down. Captain Dalton didn't see him reaching his shirt for that pistol, but I did, and I knew he'd shoot. So I figured that if I ran between them, it might throw Briscoe off guard. And that's exactly what it did. But look at the chance you took. You might have been hit. Well, what of it? Captain Dalton has been in danger more than once on our account, and I'd rather be shot myself than see Captain Dalton hurt. I'm sure proud of you, Sue. You're awful brave. I don't know that I would have been brave enough to do a thing like that. Oh, yes, you would, Johnny Robbins. You're the bravest boy I've ever known. That's why I like you so much. Gosh, Sue, I've been hoping you'd say you like me. Because since we've been on this trip together, I've learned to like you a lot, too. And I was thinking that... Thinking what, Johnny? Oh, thinking that maybe when we get a little older that, well, you... What, Johnny? Oh, that maybe we... The last to port, you young man. Sue, Captain Dalton wants us over there. Gosh, why did he have to call us right this minute? Yes, Captain Dalton, we'll be right there. I wonder what he wants. Look, who is that strange man he's talking to? I don't know. He doesn't look like a privateer. Here, Sue and Johnny, come here. I, I want a friend of mine to meet you. This is Mr. Lawrence Stanhope, the owner of the home that privateer Briscoe was trying to raid. Lawrence, this is little Sue, Mr. Grange's sister. This is Johnny Robbins, my cabin boy, whom I've learned to care for as a brother since we've been on this voyage. Bravens, both of them. How do you do, Mr. Stanhope? How do you do? Oh, I'm mighty proud to meet the both of you. Captain Dalton was just telling me how you saved his life a while ago, Miss Sue. Oh, that rascal Briscoe, you should have put him in irons, Roy. Where is he, Captain Dalton? Oh, I did as I promised him. Two of his men carried him away to his boat and they've set sail. We'll inform the island authorities of their deed. Wainwright's going to take care of that now. Oh, but you shouldn't have let them get away, Captain Dalton. I promise, lad. Rather than take a chance on some of our party being hurt and to save Mr. Stanhope's property, I promise. And in spite of the likes of Dirk Briscoe, I had to keep my promise to him. It's too conscientious you've always been, Rye, for your own good. Maybe, Lawrence Stanhope. Maybe. Captain, everything's been taken care of, Captain Dalton. Wainwright and his party saw the Briscoe's murder and crew at sail. But excuse me for saying it, sir. I think it is wrong in letting the lovers get away. Mm, perhaps, Dickon, but it's the only thing I could do. 
But what about Wainwright and Mr. Grange? Well, uh, they, they've stolen from the other side of the island to get the explosives, sir. Well, why are we staying here, Captain Dalton? Yes. Why didn't we all go to the other side of the island? As a precaution, that's all. Half of the crew's gone with Wainwright. They'll get the necessary explosives and inform the authorities about Briscoe. And we're staying here with the rest of the crew to see that Briscoe and his cutthroats don't come back this way. That's mighty white of you, Roy, old friend. I don't know how I'll ever be able to repay you for this. Oh, it's nothing, Lawrence. <laughs> the sight of such a friend as you is payment enough. It's been years since I've seen you. You know, I've often wondered where your sails were set, Roy. Oh, but see here, old man, we're wasting time. All of you must come to the house, as my family will be most happy to meet you, all of you. And it's happy we'll all be to meet them. Blow me down if we won't. <laughs> well, come along, then. Uh, go ahead of us, Miss Sue and Johnny. We'll go right to the house. We've succeeded in putting out the fire in the stable those brigands started, and, and fortunately they didn't get the chance to fire the house. Well, what are we going to do, Captain Dalton? Well, as Mr. Stanhope said, we'll all go to his house and stay there for a while, that is, you two young uns, Dickon and myself, until Mr. Grange and the crew get back with the explosives. The rest of the crew will remain on the lookout to see that Briscoe doesn't return. And while you're here, I'll see that you all get some good English cooking. I dare say you could stand a bit of it after some of the things you've all been through, eating board ship and the like. Oh, but Lawrence, won't this be too much trouble? Oh, not at all, not at all, old man. Mrs. Stanhope wouldn't think of anything else. Then what will we do, Captain Dalton? Well, when Mr. Grange and the men return with the explosives, we'll set sail for Galdo again. You know, I have an idea the sooner we return, the better it'll be. Captain Dalton, I agree with you. What with Kip, our captive, and Red Mulholy out of the way, we should have smooth sailing ahead. All that re remains is to recover the diamonds in the mine on Galto Island and, and then set sail for home. Aye, aye, let's hope it'll be smooth sailing, as you say. But suppose we should have more trouble with Dirk Briscoe and his privateers. Yes, and there's no telling what they'll try if they get away safely. There is something in what you say, Johnny and Sue, but I don't think we'll hear from them again. Well, I hope you're right, Captain Dalton. <laughs> Beats the doors, me men. It's a good thing we sighted this island. What with those British lovers on our trail, we'll hide out here on this far side of whatever island this is, and maybe we'll be safe for a while. Beach, I say, and be fast about it. Right, Step lively, you swab. Right, right. It's lucky for you, Captain Dalton kept his word to you, Briscoe. He had you down for fair. Silence, you dog of the sea. I'm a better man than Dalton. You may lay to that. It didn't seem so on the beach of Ascension. Scratch you, Hollings. I should thrash you for that, even though you're army mate. And it's Captain Briscoe to you, remember that. Aye, but there's no honor to Captain a privateer, it ain't. Why are you sailing as first mate on her, then? I was all the same as Shanghai, I was. This started out for corporate, did, and it turned out to be a privateer. And not a very good privateer, at that. Hold your tongue, dog. Men, make the boats fast. Right. That's it. Haul them in these bushes so no passing ship will sight them. I wonder what island this is we're on. What difference does it make, you lubber? It's an island. And that means a place to hide for the time being. Hold. What's that? Quiet, you lubber. There's someone making through the brush in back of us. Here he comes. He doesn't see us yet. Look. The lubber's a tough one for fair. Most likely a derelict. Alas, stop where you are, unless I drop you in your tracks. Who's there? Who are you? Never mind who we are. Who are you? My name's Mulhooley, and I'm hurt. Got caught in the wake of a blooming volcano. Mulhooley? Red Mulhooley? What's that? How do you know they calls me Red? Because I know you, Red Mulhooley. That's why. But I don't know you. Who are you? Take a good look, Red Mulhooley, and try to remember. Stave in me, Regan. Dirk Briscoe. Aye, Dirk Briscoe. The same Dirk Briscoe you knifed in the back many years ago at Singapore. Aye, Dirk Briscoe. But that was many years ago. It was your life or mine. Besides, I tell you, I'm hurt bad. You wouldn't take advantage of an injured man. Maybe. Maybe not. That remains to be seen. What are you doing on this blooming island? Listen, Briscoe, I'll make you a proposition. What kind of a proposition, dog? Listen, 
Let bygones be bygones, and I'll show you a fortune. Sounds interesting. Go on. First off, you got to say we're partners from now on. If there's a fortune in the wind, I'd go in partnership with a rat. Go on, I say. Do you know what island this is? No. Go to island. Do you know what's on this island? Get to the point, you build scum, before I capsize your hulk. Diamonds. What's that? Diamonds. A world of them. But they're covered up by a landslide, and we'd have to blast to get at them. I've got explosives on board. That's easy. Who owns them? The people I sail here with. Ezra Grange and Captain Dalton. Dalton? Roy Dalton? Aye. Do you know him? Do I know him? I'll say I know the worm. He says he owns this swag of diamonds? Well, the man he sails for does. It's all the same. Mulholy, I'm going to forget our old grievances. That's talking, Brisco. I knew you would. But for only one reason, Red Mulholy. What's that, Brisco? Because there's one sailor I hate worse than you. And that sailor is Roy Dalton. I'll show him he can't fool with Dirk Briscoe's affairs. The meddling dog. Diamonds, eh? So that's why Dalton was at Ascension Island. For explosives to blast his mine, eh? Well, when he gets back here, there won't be any diamond mine left to blast. And Dirk Briscoe will be a rich sailor. Diamonds, eh? <laughs> so, Dirk Briscoe and Red Mulhooley have teamed up to outdo Captain Dalton. Well, Mulhooley wasn't killed after all when Kip's cabin burned and collapsed. Captain Dalton, Ezra Grange, Johnny and Sue and the rest of our friends think they have easy sailing ahead. But what's going to happen when they return to Galto Island? Will Briscoe and Red Mulhooley succeed in blasting the diamonds and getting away before they return? We'll just have to wait and find out when it's time to listen to the next exciting adventure in the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward saying goodbye for now. <laughs>